Welcome to another edition of the Dental Today podcast. Thank you for stopping by. This is brought to you by Lab Media TV. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and here we go. Remember to follow us on social media at Lab Media TV. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whatever time of the day you're watching and, or listening to this podcast. You are tuning in to Dental Today. My name is Hezekiah Morales, and today we have the privilege of having with us a gentleman who in 2012 was uh, called one of the 40 under 40. Since that time, his career has launched. He's been traveling. He's been all over the world giving lectures, teaching, uh, and that's one of his passions. He's here with us today, Mr. Edgar Munoz. Edgar, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for that intro. It's a you know, I, it's a little, I, I keep it more humble. I just, I just say I'm just a regular technician, um, just trying to, um, you know, get this going for me. But no, uh, no, I'm not really one of the best. They, they, they've given me that, but it's, it's a privilege to, to be here. Uh, oh, thank you for coming, Edgar. Thank you for coming. It's very interesting. I was uh, pondering before we, we, we came on live here that uh, we were both just feet away from each other. A couple of days ago in Orlando, and we could not meet up. How crazy was that? Exactly, exactly. We were both busy. It was a busy. Show. <laughs> Everybody was coming up, coming. You know, so it was. A, it's a good thing to have to be busy. But yeah, I can't believe we we couldn't get get together there. Yeah, that was crazy. So you came down uh, to Orlando uh, for the FDLA meet. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what you were doing there, the things that you encountered there. Yeah, so we we uh, we traveled. Uh, the FDL of this year, we did a little bit of some demo for the Zon booth. Um, we spoke a little bit on what we came out here in Noritaki was the FC paste. Um, again, I have my own laboratory. Um, I'm just one of their their guys that, you know, are teaching right now. Um, and so we went down there, did FC paste, which is our new low fire and uh, low fusing um, paste things kit. And then we we're coming out with a, a new puck. So that was exciting. That's what we were showing off there in, in Florida. Very nice, very nice. Florida is uh, obviously, you know, I'm here in South Florida, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We we drove up, um, but yeah, definitely going out there. The Florida people are are, are amazing people. Uh, it's interesting. We were on the floor, and I was looking for you. And uh, Bart Cothran, you, you do you know Bart Cothran? Well, correct. Yeah, absolutely. He was. Um, he helped me out. Uh, he said, oh, "Oh, wait a minute. Let's walk around. Let's see if we can find him." And <laughs> we couldn't find you, but it was. Um, it was great. Uh, the, the meeting was a great meeting out there. Uh, uh, a lot of great people that we already know. And uh, yeah, we're, we're glad that you were able to be down here. I mean, uh, it's it was the same exact uh, date as uh, LMT West. So we, we did have some, some absences because of that, but it was still great. It was great uh, having you down here, although I, I wasn't able to uh, see your demos or anything, but it was great having you down here. And you also mentioned, um, Edgar, you you just came back from, uh, recently got back from uh, Japan, is that correct? Correct, correct. We went over in November. I, I, like I said, this has been a very, very humbling, very um, journey for, in this dental field, and I've been able to travel different places in the last couple of years. Um, and if you would ask me two, three years ago if this would have happened, I would have said no, like I had no idea. So it's been a blessing, and we did go to Japan to tour the Noritake facility. There's so much that I saw that there's some that I can't talk about. They they didn't make me sign a waiver, but the things that I saw now I'm teaching. Um, I am um, showing that what I can. I mean, I was with one of the greats there as well. Miss Bond was Miss Bond was the creator of the EX3 portion system, and she started this whole thing. So there was a lot of people there that that I was able to see and train with. That's amazing. That's amazing. And and I also I know that you have. Um, you have a personal uh, Instagram where you were, were posting a lot of uh, phenomenal photos as well. Exactly. So yeah, so so you're multi-talented here, Edgar. You, you don't only uh, you don't only get down in the lab, but you also bring your camera and shoot around as well. Yeah, exactly. I, um, that's, uh, I'm fine. And I didn't really found photography through dental, and so originally, again, I'm from the West Coast, from Santa Cruz, California. And, you know, I grew up in the baseball background with my father. And so since the age maybe of three that I can remember, I had a baseball in my hand. Um, so I he taught me different, you know, areas of the sport. Um, so 
that's where I originally came from. After some injuries through the college, I, you know, I, it was done. Um, I had to look for somewhere else. So I think baseball really gave me that foundation of multi-talented, uh, especially with the hands of how to put your, your fingers on which seams and how to actually those details. And now through dental, I'm kind of finding photography and I'm really loving it. I'm, I usually travel with a drone now and I'll do some video photography with drones and I'm learning how to just um, do the video part. But all my logos that you see, I've done the logos, the marketing. There has never been an outside person. So Elite Dental is, is it's just me. And it's mainly because I started this after college. Um, I took baseball too seriously. And, um, you know, sports really, either you make it or you don't. And if you don't, you're just broke as hell. So you're going to learn how to do things yourself. Um, and that's what I did. I started doing logos and websites. My website, I'd done it myself. Um, everything I really, really have done myself. Even accounting now, which I'm trying to let go of the accounting, but it's just getting too much with everything. But everything, like I said. It's been fun. Wow, that's awesome! So you were you were out uh, in in um, Japan doing this thing with Noritaki. I'm sure it was a, a great experience for you. Was it the first time you were out there in uh, Japan? Yeah, it was the first time. I, I wouldn't. I never really saw that area as me to visit. Um, mm -hmm. It was awesome. We got went to Osaka. We went to um, Kyoto. We went to some other places, and then um, Tokyo. We did a day in Tokyo as well. Awesome. Wow, that's amazing. So with 18 years of experience in the lab, in different scenarios, in different situations, let me ask you this. What has been uh, or what have been a few of your major challenges as a dental technician, uh, let's say in, in the lab? Let's not talk about the social or the marketing aspect of that. Just in the lab, what have been the, the, the greatest challenges? And then I'll follow that up by how were you able to overcome those challenges and go from uh, starting the lab to now where you're teaching, you're, you're being invited to go out to Japan and uh, see the, the, the cutting edge, uh, th that moment where the cutting edge actually comes to life. What, what, what have been, what have those uh, challenges been and how have you overcome them? I think the biggest challenges is, is, it's been the whole journey, really. Um, I'm not from the dental background, so I, what I've seen in dental background, there's a lot of respect, and, and I understand that. But it's been um, just trying to get in there and learning everything because when I started, there I started an 80 man laboratory in this area, and it was just learning. It, it's trying to learn um, because I had already spent uh, four years through the college um, taking baseball seriously, so I didn't know anything dental wise. So it's been that learning experience in, in the lab where I started, everybody was hiding their, their techniques. People were scared to show you because it was so competitive. Everybody was um, fighting for that 10 cents raise. And so everybody was hiding their techniques and it's been really hard to just learn and um, understand some of this dental and ceramics, mainly ceramics. I think I'm gonna be a student for life. Uh, so I think Japan really opened my eyes to how, how they are so advanced there in ceramics and how seriously they take it. Um, you know, when you think you're almost there and, and Japan open eyes, I'm just like, man, I still have probably, I'm gonna be a student for life. So that's been the biggest thing. Um, and then in my area, I have 15 labs surrounding me about, with, that's including garage labs and big labs and, and established labs. Um, so there's a lot of competition and. And that's right now what I'm battling in my area is price um, dropping. Everybody's just dropping to I, right now. I think I got one for $19. So that's another thing I'm fighting is to understand. I'm more of a, a business person. Um, so I do see business opportunities. I want to rush it that way. But this year I've been trying to get my aesthetics and really caring about what I'm doing more than financially part. And that's part of me that I battle to is I want to make financially make this a business, um, but at the same time, enjoy it as well. So it's, 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 I think it's multiple things in this field. So, so balancing the, uh, the emotional and, and, and psychological aspect of, of, of what you're doing and investing yourself into the final product and also trying to make sure that the numbers align themselves properly is, you would say is one of your biggest challenges right now. Exactly. It's just numbers. Again, everything for me has been numbers and making sure 
uh, especially because I did start my lab. I, it started in a garage out of a port with one porcelain oven uh, four years ago, and and now four years later, you know, my numbers have matched. Everything has matched correctly, and I've been blessed to be able to just have really any equipment that I've been wanting. Um, and that's been a very big challenge for me is to 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 do that. Um, so again, seven hundred dollars is what I started the lab four years ago, and people. Wow. Have, me even today but that's what i was put in a situation four years ago where my wife was pregnant i was working for a laboratory and um but one day it was a friday afternoon they uh boss came in and said well guys you know this is going to be your last day because we're basically they were sending they're going to turn into a shipping station so they let six of us go our ceramists and they were going to start sending you know overseas and so I was put in a situation where, you know, I had to do something. So I bought a furnace and I said, look, this 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 must be a signal for me to start my own thing. I had already been doing it for about 15 years in other labs. And so I, I went, I bought a $700 furnace. I had some porcelain samples and I started doing piecework, which is just basically you're getting the ceramic work from another lab, building and contouring and glazing it. And that's how I was doing it. So yeah, that's how it started four years ago. And again, it's oh, wow. uh, it's been a blessing. It was tough then because I had a pregnant wife. Um, you know, they throw you out one day to the other. And I had already mainly, you know, worked all this area already. So, it, you know, it was a blessing in disguise, but it, it was tough. Wow, that's awesome. So you, so w w your your baby is four. My, my son was born seven weeks ago. So that's... Uh, <laughs> it's definitely, it's definitely uh, uh, an eye an eye opener, right? Uh, life, life hits you in, in a different, um, in a different light yeah. and we're able to see things differently. Absolutely. What a, what a powerful story. And, and so l let me ask you this, uh, go, just going back to that, because I think that's, that's very important for, for any technician and even for any, uh, anyone that works with, um, with a particular craft that, that requires, uh, a, a level, a high level of standards, uh, especially when, when we're working in the medical here, how is it that you consolidate that? How, how do you, wh what is the point where you make the decision, okay, I, I, I've i put time into this uh, project, uh, whatever it is, a crown or, or a bridge or whatever it is, uh, and, and and this is this is the point. I could do more, but this, this is the point because if I spend more time with this, then it becomes, uh, then I'm breaking even or even take a loss. How do you, What's your thought process on that? So I think sports really helped me a lot uh, on that situation. And, and I look at things differently. Sometimes I think that, you know, for example, in baseball, sometimes you're, you're, you're taking, you know, you're the batter and this thing's coming at you 80 miles an hour. You got to kind of read the situation at this in, in within less than seconds. So, you know, I've, I've learned really quickly to make a decision fast of what I need to do and kind of just go with it. And once you make that decision, it's done and you, you move on. It, it, you can't go back and try to hit that ball again. And the same thing with dental is I've taken into dental that way. And and you look at a crown, you do your best always as, as you're supposed to and the, at, to your ability. And every laboratory has their ability. There's always guys way better than me. And you as well as in sports, you got to accept that this pitcher might be better than you, but you're going to do your best. Same thing in the dental world. There's going to be a ceramist better than you. There's probably something better you could do. But sometimes you just got to make that decision. You do your best and it's done and you move on to the next crown. Mm, that's that's a very, very interesting way of, 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 of seeing that. I like that. Sports definitely have a way of sports, martial arts. Um, uh, you know, any military training definitely has a way of, of, of uh, tweaking your mindset to to exactly. be decisive. Now, let me ask you this. What would you tell a tech uh, that is possibly struggling with this, but maybe hasn't had a structured sports environment, uh, you know, with, you know, that type of training or that type of mentality that's possibly thinking about, you know, I, I, I have been um, flirting with the idea of opening my own lab and possibly uh, doing this or doing that, but uh, I don't know how to manage this. What, what, what would your uh, what would your advice be to, to a, a person in, in that situation? Yeah, it's, you know, my my main thing is to to tell them, because most of the time fear is what stops everything. You know, fear and, 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 and failing is, and even thinking about failing 
And most of the time, that's where a lot of these dreams stop at. Um, you know, mine was very close to that. I, you know, when I first started my laboratory, again, I told you $700 furnace, I was in a garage. And in that time, it was about 30 degrees. So I would go down there after I worked regular hours and and I kept just doing that overnight. It was probably 9 p.m. to 2 in the morning, 32 degrees in the garage, and I had a car on my back. I still probably have pictures of it, but you just got to keep going. And you, you'll see the sun, you know, you'll see the light here and there, but it, it was tough. You know, just not let fear get you. And then what other people say as well, um, you know, because there's always going to be somebody saying something about your work or, or, you know, trying to put it down or, and to me, I mean, we all, we all have our skills. We all have everything. You just got to go at it and with no fear. Very, very nice. Very nice. Now, going into the industry, more of a general outlook on, on the industry. Uh, wh what are you excited about right now? Uh, something that you've seen, whether you saw it at a show, whether you saw it. Uh, obviously, you can't speak about uh, some of the things that you saw in Japan. Obviously, uh, the NDAs are very serious. But um, wh what are you excited right now to see? Uh, per, well, me personally, I think that I've been excited a lot more um, with some of the ceramics that are going to come out here in Noritake. There's a couple that are coming out, and it's going to help us a lot in the when our side. Um, a little bit later, maybe when it, once it starts coming out, I'll start talking about more. But there is, and mainly because my ceramic work needs a lot of work, all my building up, my layering. Um, I thought I, you know, I thought I was doing okay. Again, you know, when you go in with Oshima out in Japan and you see what he's doing or what he has done, you just humbles yourself. And so I've been working a lot on that. I've actually took less cases now. So I'm able to just practice, practice, practice because it was, to me, it was embarrassing what I was doing compared to Oshima, one of the greats, or uh, there, there's many more out there that we saw and it was just scary. But yeah, we, um, ceramics are coming out, but the digital world is not too exciting right now from what I'm seeing. It's just quality has gone so way down with some of this digital. And so that's one thing that I'm not, not, not too excited about. I know at first when it did come out, I did get on the horse. It was very, you know, I'm more of a tech savvy guy. I was very excited. I took on with it, but the things that I'm seeing now are very not, you know, the quality ones are not there. So, so uh, I, I do understand that you do work with CAD-CAM. That's why uh, you brought that into the conversation. So w when you mean the quality, are you talking about, uh, for example, the, um, maybe the, the lack of precision in, in, uh, in the work that's being done? Are we talking about the quality in the materials? W what, what, what is it that you, that you believe is an opportunity to improve on with the digital side of, of what we're seeing now? Yeah, I think accurate, the accuracy, I think even I saw myself depending too much on this machine, thinking that this machine was accurate exactly, and I was not double checking things. And I think that's what's going on now, where things are being milled, restorations are being milled, and then they're not checked, double checked by hand anymore. It seems like I'm seeing a lot of just milling, glazing, it's done. There's no more aesthetic look to it, um, where, you know, the pucks can get you you know, I'm in digital. I use it as a tool as well. Um, I use my multi layers as a tool for foundations now. Is the way that I'm being taught, and I'm seeing a little bit more. But yeah, just the the teeth are not looking like teeth. Dentures are not looking like dentures. They're you know they're, and I understand they're new technology, and it's going to get better. But um, I think we need to start again back to putting those hands on on these restorations. Mm. So you so if I'm understanding correctly, your your outlook right now uh, with marrying the digital with the traditional is to go into the digital at just as a tool, but not rely on the um, on the details or the aesthetics. Am, am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, right. Yeah, I think we need both. Put both in there. Um, I think we either going one way or the other, and digital is almost fighting hands, and the hands are fighting the digital. So I think that if we start you know, merging those together, it's, it's going to be a lot better and it's going to look a lot better. It's, and we're all, you know, this, this feel is going to get back where it was. But where I think that by not doing this, this is why we're seeing price just drop because mm -hmm. everybody's just milling, 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 sending it out. Just, you know, worrying more about price and we need to, you know, especially, you know, I, no, I did it as well. I, I went into the digital world very excited. I love the, these mills and 
Um, I had to stop myself very quickly. Because it can become a little addicting, getting the quick fix. Exactly. Just the <laughs> quick fix and, and that's it. let it go. Yeah, you know, one of the things I was having a conversation with a, with a good friend of mine, um, his name is Alexander Raimundo from uh, Argentina, and he was, uh, he was just uh, going on and on of, uh, on his uh, philosophy, which is obviously the philosophy of, of uh, many uh, dental professionals, but sometimes, as, as you mentioned, it gets lost. And it's uh, it, it, whether you're, you're a dentist or you're a lab technician, the job of the professional is the health of the patient. Exactly. And if aesthetically, uh, let's say the technician is not, not doing their best, then that's in some way, shape or form affecting the health of the patient, whether it's psychological, even physical. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's very, very, very interesting. Now, uh, let me ask you this. What, what, what is your, um, what is your, what is your experience with the 3D printing and, and all this, the 3D printed dentures? Have you... Have you seen any of this? What's your opinion on this? Yeah, 3D printing. Um, I started maybe 3D printing a few months ago, um, and I'm still, it's, it's a new new area for me as well. So I'm kind of, I was pushed into mainly because of the digital, the digital scans. And for me to layer, I needed a model. So that's why I was really pushed into getting these models. But um, I try to rely some, um, not on those models as much because I'm, I don't have the greatest printers. Again, it's, it's so new. Everybody's printer is the same. You know, they say it's they're all good. Then you get one, and they're really not. Um, <laughs> learning the, about more how they print, the different technologies of how they print, um, and that's what right now. But yeah, I do print a little bit. Um, I, I still don't like it. I, 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 for me, you know, I still pour models. I just feel a lot better pouring models. But it's it's part of the what's changing, and we got to adapt. But at the same time, again, we need to to keep you know in mind that patient and i'm like and i'm learning about that as well so um yeah good stuff well let me let me ask you this um the next the next five years what what uh what is your outlook personally in the next five years what are your goals within the industry uh, what are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to do? Where are you looking to be? Uh, even taking in consideration the the technological advances. Yeah, always growing. Again, um, you know, business wise, but mainly my my techniques and everything. So I want to keep on learning um, and keep on that route. I have lots to learn, lots to go. There's so much technicians that are are very much more talented, way past me. Um, so I'm still working at that. So, you know, that's the goal now um, and to keep uh, doing the best job that I can do on my side. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I got open doors for everywhere for this technology and everything that's coming with it. Um, I'm not really keeping up with too much what's going on. I, I've, um, I'm way behind now that I've really seen I got to start learning on my side and, and catching up to all those 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 guys for now. And uh, you do teach, you do travel and, and, and lecture as well. What are your upcoming uh, events? Yeah, so we started, like I said, I started, um, it was never my plan to teach. Um, you know, I've got, I got an opportunity to go to Puerto Rico with Karari, and I, I did see a big need in, in the world to, to share um, our techniques. I've been blessed to be able to be around a lot of great technicians. And that's how I mainly learned was sponging, you know, just learning and looking and, and just learning. And so now that's what I want to do. I've, I've, the, you know, a couple of the guys told me how grateful they were. And, you know, it hit me really that hard where I was like, dang, these, you know, for me, it was just like building concert. It was just nothing. I guess I had, you know, been blessed to see that. And these guys don't. So, now that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to teach, you know, the guys that are coming in the basics of what I know the best that I can. And then from there, they can move on and grow themselves. But right now we have a couple of things planned. I know uh, Zon has Zon Expo. We do have a couple of things. That? When is that? Zon Expo? October. I'm pretty sure it's October. So it's, it's still a ways away. But we get a lot of um, in laboratories came from Pennsylvania. So we did that in lab. So those little things are always constant. Uh, other laboratories we're going in um, that need some help, especially maybe um, some with when they're changing products to Noritaki is where I'm going in. Mm, 
Very nice. So uh, if uh, anyone wants to follow you, what are your hashtags? Where can they follow you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'm everywhere, really. Uh, it's going to be either Elite Dental Studio or Elite Munoz. I've tried to, if there's another Edgar Munoz that is a, like a reporter, so I try to uh, separate that. So it's Elite, E-L-I-T-E Munoz. And I'm really everywhere, or you know, if they need anything, they're always welcome to message me as well. I'm, I'm here just to help and, and try to help anybody that, that, that wants a little bit of help. Awesome. Edgar, it's been a privilege having you on. Thank you so much for your time, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Edgar Munoz from the north side of Georgia, Gainesville, by way of Santa Cruz, California. Edgar, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, bro. Thank you again, man. All righty. Have a good one, folks. We'll see you soon.